Hey guys, Alifia here from Alifia Lifestyle and welcome back to my channel. This is officially my first video of 2021, so I wanted to hop on here and wish you all a happy new year. And also for um, you know supporting my journey so far, I have hit 6,000, over 6,000 subscribers now in less than a year. So thank you all so much uh, for sticking around. And if you are new here or if you have been watching me for a while but haven't subscribed, please do so right now. The button I believe is right here, so make sure you click that. All right, today's video has been much requested after the acrylic ocean video I posted a while back. A lot of you wanted to see a watercolor version of that, so that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you today. If you want to watch the extended real-time version of this tutorial with additional warm-up exercises and in-depth explanations, hop on over to Skillshare where you can also get Skillshare Premium free for 14 days. The link to that is in the description. Also, as a bonus, the first 25 people can watch this class on Skillshare for free, so be sure to check out those links below. Alright, let's dive right in and begin today's painting. So here I am using my tape as a reference to mark down the horizon line. Let's now begin by prepping our palette. So I'm going to be using Thalo Blue and Indigo for this entire ocean painting. Um, I will be using a little bit of acrylic white, uh, but that will be at the very end, so we'll come to that um, after a while. But for now, let's begin by starting to paint the sky. I'm using a medium-sized flat brush here and wetting the entire first half of the paper above the horizon, which will be our sky. This technique is referred to the wet-on-wet -wet technique, where you apply paint onto a wet canvas. Make sure to not over pool your paper, just a light sheen should be enough. Using the same flat brush, I am now dipping my paint into the Thalo Blue and using a flat wash at the very top. The goal here is to get a nice gradient moving downwards where it is darker at the top and then lighter as we move downwards towards the horizon. I'm going to be repeating this step one more time until I'm satisfied. And then when you're ready, take off your tape that you marked with horizon line and move on to the next step. Alright, so now we are going to be painting on our very first base layer to the ocean. So this time we will have a reverse gradient where it will be darker at the very bottom and then as we move upwards, we're going to get lighter towards the horizon line. Okay, now using the very small, thin round brush that we have, I am going to be lightly kind of marking my horizon line using Thalo Blue. Um, it doesn't have to be dark or anything right now, this is just so that you have a distinction as to where the sky and the ocean meet. Um, this is just for you to kind of keep track of what's going on, it'll be easier to paint moving forward. You may notice your paper getting slightly wrinkled or warped in certain sections, especially if you use the wet on wet technique a lot. This is normal, but if you use a heavier watercolor paper, you will find that the page will get back to normal once you remove your tape off. Sometimes repositioning your paper like, this, like so can help, um, but please do this only once your paint has completely dried. Another really good tip is to place your paper under some heavy books overnight. Once you're completely done with your project, um, that often straightens it out immediately. But yeah, I find Arteza watercolor paper straightens out right away once I remove the tape. Um, I have linked it below in the material section if you are interested to check it out. I do recommend this paper a lot for everyday purposes. Um, I do find it you know, very reasonably priced for the quality and um, I, I really do like it a lot. Alright, I'm now using my medium sized round brush to begin painting the waves. Now this is a lot easier than it looks and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So taking some indigo, let's begin our first wave. Think of these as stretched out mountains. This is the easiest way I can explain it. Um, so using the tip of your brush, begin making a thin line elongated while you hit a peak and then stretch it back down again. Thank you. 
So here I'm just repeating these mountain shaped waves again and notice how I'm connecting them this time. Some waves can be left by itself and some should be connected. One important step to keep note of is that as you move towards the horizon, your waves should get smaller in size. So be very intentional of keeping those strokes thinner as you move upwards. So some of these waves have these zigzag motions, right? So you've got these mountain peaks, some of them connect, some of them don't. And then you've got these like zigzag motion waves. So think of the letter Z, but in a stretched out, exaggerated way. I have left my paint to dry and now using some phthalo blue, I am simply adding a layer of that underneath all of my existing waves. This is done to build some dimension and depth to each wave. Make sure to not cover up the very uh, light initial first base uh, layer that we did. So the very light blues that you see should still be showing through as well. So you want to basically have your very dark tones, your mid tones, which is your um, phthalo blue, and then your very light base tone that we did in the very, very first step. So all these three colors should be showing through. I will be using my thin brush again for the entire painting moving forward to gain more control. So now it is time to build up on those waves even further. So I'm taking the indigo to darken up the dark tones. I'm simply going over each initial wave we made at the very beginning and deepening them up. Remembering to keep it light, thin and small as we move towards the horizon. Now it's time to build up on the mid-tones a bit more, so using Taylor Blue, add in a layer underneath those dark tones like we did before. We are simply repeating these steps over and over until you are happy with the outcome. Here I'm going in again with indigo to darken up those initial sort of waves a bit more. As you can see, watercolor is all about sort of building up those layers slowly and you know achieving those dimensions and depths. 
um, as you move forward so it requires a bit of patience um, but once you get the hang of it it's pretty much I mean at least in this project it's pretty much the same sort of technique and the same steps that we do over and over again until you are happy with how your project has turned out. I wanted to break up the composition a little bit and I decided to add in a couple of words um, just sort of far away up in the sky uh, just so that your eyes can flow throughout the painting. I'm bringing out some white acrylic paint and adding little specks to that to the ocean and waves as highlights. And now for the part we've been waiting for, the most exciting part is to take off the tape. Once you're completely done and your paint has dried, uh, remove that tape off so that you can see how your final project looks. Does anyone else find this tape removing process so satisfying? <laughs> I just love the sound that it makes. And also the excitement that you build up while you're painting just to see what your final project looks like. And you can only really, really tell <laughs> Once you take off the tape, um, it just really does look so clean at the end. I really hope you all enjoyed today's painting tutorial. If you would like to share this with me, the link to my private Facebook group is mentioned below. Also, a real-time version of this video is available on Skillshare, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Do not forget to like this video and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you friends so much for watching and I will catch you very soon. Bye guys.